So what we're going to be looking at is what makes up very various uh, groupings of life on Earth. We're going to start out big, looking at what are called biomes, and then we're going to narrow that down into smaller areas and smaller areas and smaller areas. So section 1.1, we're talking, our word of the day is biomes. What's a biome? Well, first of all, it's the largest division of the biosphere. What does the word sphere mean? Circu well, ball shaped, not just circuit, three dimensional. What does bio almost always mean? Biology. Living. So what we're talking about are the things that affect the living stuff on hey, which <coughs> sphere do you think? Earth. We're starting out big. Biosphere is all the living things on Earth and the stuff that affects the living things on Earth. And then we're going to zoom in. So the biosphere is the global sum of all what we call ecosystems. It can also be called the zone of life on Earth, a closed and a self-regulating system. So we're going to go from biomes, which are huge areas, to ecosystems, which are smaller areas, to habitats, which are subgroups of ecosystems. That's what that little picture there means. We're going to start out wide and slowly zoom in. What makes up a biome? It's when you have environments with similar biotic components. That's the fancy word for living things, plants, animals, but even smaller, bacteria and fungi. And then non-living things. Now the fancy word for non-living components, abiotic. Because if you put an A in front of a word, that means the opposite of or non. Uh, you know what? What affects that? A temperature, precipitation, type of soil, how much sunlight you get, altitude, all sorts of things like that. So this is right from your textbook, figure 1.3. There's a lovely color picture in your textbook. Yours is black and white, but it photocopied, okay? So the biosphere consists of biomes. Each biome contains many ecosystems, and each eco ecosystem contains habitats in which a variety of organisms live. Here are some examples of non-living or abiotic components of a biome. So the abiotic components of a grassland ecosystem are the non-living features of the ecosystem that the living organisms depend on. Sunlight, for example. Precipitation. Where and how the water is distributed. Even the slope of the land might affect how the water runs off, whether it's able to gather into lakes or whether it just runs downhill and, and leaves that area. These are the biotic aspects, so birds, worms, insects, fungus, little mice, plants, and they all come together to form a biome. What are some of the non-living or abiotic factors that affect biomes? Some of the big ones, the two big ones are Temperature, precipitation. How much heat, how much rain? Or lack of and lack of. Although precipitation doesn't always have to be rain, uh, there's something called cloud forests. There are rain forests, but there are also cloud forests that live at an altitude and are permanently in the clouds. And so although there's no, never rain there, it's so humid, it's like permanently foggy, and the water condenses on the trees as though it was rain, but it's not rain. Snow is also technically not necessarily rain. So I should just say how much moisture and how hot it is. These are the most important our new word, I'll put it in capitals, abiotic factors that affect biomes. Why? Well, in terms of a life pyramid, in terms of what affects what, it all starts with plants. 
So the a but the amount of rain dictates what plants can grow. Because if you got no plants, you're not going to have much higher or bigger or more complicated life forms. And temperature determines the length of the growing season and therefore the type of plants. Wait a minute, Mr. Duick, shouldn't like um, height be on here? Because don't different things grow at different altitudes? It's not the height, it's the temperature on the mountain. The higher you go, the colder it gets. That's what affects what grows there. The two big ones, temperature and precipitation. Everything else can, most everything else can be explained in terms of those two. You have to be able to read this graph. It looks very complicated. It's not. Yours is black and white. I have a lovely color one here. And I think it's in your textbook as well. If you, let me go find it. Pause the video for a second. If you want the lovely color picture, page 13 in your textbook. So here's what it's telling you. It turns out we have the following subgroups of biomes, and there's some disagreement, but this is kind of what our curriculum has decided. You have boreal forests, deserts, grasslands, permanent ice, temperate deciduous forests, temperate rainforests, tropical rainforests, and tundra. These are the main groupings of the biomes of the earth. And here's what we're saying. Allison, if you noticed that you had an average temperature of 5 degrees and you had an average precipitation of 150 millimeters, yep. What's tundra? It's uh, if you go up north before you get to everything covered with ice. Tundra is before everything gets covered with ice. There's very few trees. The ground is frozen permanently about three or four feet down. But on the top, you have this boggy, swampy in the summer, freezes in the winter, swampy in the summer, very few trees, kind of barren area. Okay, we'll be talking about actually one of the handouts that you'll be working on later on is you'll be doing a summary of each of the biomes, just summarizing the textbook. Okay, hey, if you were studying somewhere and you had that data that the average temperature was five degrees and there was about 150 millimeters of rain, well, five degrees is right here. 150 millimeters of rain is right there. I would probably say that it was temperate deciduous forest even without going there. I'll bet you there's forests there. Or if you noticed that the temperature, average annual temperature was 20 degrees and you had 250 millimeters of rain, uh, it's right on the border. It's either temperate rainforest or tropical rainforest. I should probably have made this, well, actually the 250 is good. I should have made this 23 degrees. And that nudges it into rainforest. What if the temperature is 23 degrees, but you notice there's only about five millimeters of rain? 23 degrees is right about here. Five millimeters would be right about here. Oh, what biome are we almost certainly in? desert. Here's what we're saying. In the desert, it's hot and dry. But we can be more specific than that. We can actually give you actual numbers so you can predict what the biome would be or will turn into. What if the temperature was 23 degrees, but you had about 50 millimeters of rain? Probably grassland. Still dry, but not as dry as desert. There's enough moisture there for grass to grow. And Tyra, as soon as you have grass growing, you can start to think about, oh, what other animals might be able to survive there? All those wildebeest type things that you've seen in the movies, whether it's cattle or buffalo or deer, all those. That suddenly now is in the picture. Where if we were back to our five millimeters desert, are you expecting to find large herds wandering around in the desert? No. Why? Not because of the temperature, not because of the precipitation. No grass. And that's why if you go back, I said temperature and precipitation, they affect the plants that grow. Okay? 
So let's fill in some questions. Julia's going to put her phone face down for me. I caught you earlier and I didn't say anything. This region has an average temperature between 5 degrees and 30 degrees and an average rainfall of less than 10 centimeters. What region is it? Let's see, an average temperature between 5 degrees and 30 degrees, average rainfall less than 10 centimeters. What region are we talking about here? Desert. The next one says we have an average temperature of around 10 degrees and we get around 230 centimeters of rainfall. 10 degrees is here, 230 centimeters would be right about there. Oh, what are we looking at? Now, I haven't yet told you what each and where each of these are located, but we can already name them. Uh, temperate. Rainforest. Uh, by the way, you can put in brackets we are a temperate rainforest. We're not a tropical rainforest because we're not hot all year round. We are a rainforest here on the west coast. We get lots of rain. And does it snow very often here in the lower mainland? No. In fact, in the wintertime, it's actually mostly still above zero slightly, like five degrees or six degrees, or certainly on the rainy days, eight or nine degrees. Our year-round average temperature is about 10 or 11 degrees. Lots of rain. We're a temperate rainforest. So certainly, I would have no problem on the test giving you a graph like this and saying, identify, if I tell you, Allison, temperature and precipitation, you should be able to narrow it down to which biome we're talking about. Turn in your textbook to page 10 to see a lovely color picture of this. These are the biomes of the world. I'm going to be giving you this sheet later on in black and white. It's the one you're allowed to bring to the test. And what I'll be doing is I'll be handing out the pencil crayons and you can make up your own color legend and color in the appropriate areas. That's the only way I know of Tyra to get you a color copy. On the provincial, you will get color copies. What's that? Oh, you have one already? From where? Oh, Mr. Andiola. Oh, nice. From last year or? Oh, oh you, guys, you guys came in later. That's okay. Yeah, so he does the same thing. We'll do that, you know what, maybe next week on Friday, because it'll be a Friday. You'll be all, oh, tired. We'll, we'll kind of, oh, no, Friday is your test. Oh, we'll do it one of these days. But here's your question now, Julia. You said, Julie, you said, uh, what's tundra? You know what? It's not the Arctic. It's just before the Arctic. It's not, before, it's not the permanent ice. It's what we have up north before we get to the permanent ice. And we'll talk about the characteristics, but that's where it is. What did I say we were? We're right here. What's the blue? Temperate rainforest. What's this dark green? Yeah, but uh, okay, what's this? Do I have a different color screen than on your? Okay. So you can use whichever, but what's this area here? This is the tropical rainforest. Okay. Do you see any patterns? It looks as though the earth is made up in kind of long swaths. Certainly, it looks like most of this is the same. I don't see in my picture any light beige appearing anywhere else. Uh, this is the boreal forest. This is what we think of as our interior Canada forests. Oh, and across Europe, northern Europe as well. What seems to run right around 25 degrees latitude? A lot of desert. What desert is this one here? What's the desert in North Africa, the big one? Sahara or Sahara, however you want to pronounce it. Mexico and the southern U.S. has some desert as well. And it does extend into Europe and Asia as well. Oh, and Australia's got some desert. Some desert there and there and there. And because those are in weird locations compared to the big bulk, you might want to ask, hey, why are those deserts there? And that has been asked. You have the tropical rainforests along the equator, roughly. So there's definitely some patterns. Lots of ice in Antarctica, but it's shrinking. Some ice up north, but it's shrinking. You okay with that? 
So, what biome type do we belong to? This is us right here. What are we from your, either your textbook or this picture? By the way, if someone, if each table can have page 10 open, that would help, Cam? Just so. I realize that means opening 10 whole pages in your textbook. But what are we? Temperate rainforest. What else gets temperate rainforest? Not that many. Down here, hey, what's this? Middle Earth, right? If, if you're wondering, if you watch the Lord of the Rings movie, that climate should have looked kind of similar to us in winter. It is. Where else? So in the US, Seattle and Portland are still part, so Oregon is still part of the temperate rainforest. And then down here, which is uh, Argentina, I think, has a very similar to us. Do you see any patterns at all? Well, yeah, they're kind of in horizontal. Can I use the word swath? You guys know what I mean by that, right? In these long stripes, roughly, roughly. Why would that be the case? What did I say the main two things that affect biomes? What are the main two abiotic factors? Precipitation and what? Hey. Does your latitude affect your average year-round temperature? So yeah, you should expect to find similar biomes closer to the equator, similar biomes 40 degrees north, similar biomes 60 degrees north. So OK, that's not, in hindsight, that surprising. Latitude. That's what I want you to give me, Mr. Duick, a little latitude. No. Latitude is the distance measured in degrees north or south from the equator. <coughs> At the equator, the sun's rays shine directly overhead. Anyone here been to the equator? Stood there? You have? Did you do the photo with one foot in the north, one foot in the south? Because I, I have one of those of me. I have a little souvenir shirt, it doesn't matter. You, there's, you can buy. I stood on the equator. I stood and taught for three weeks in Ecuador, which stand, it's Spanish for equator. So Ecuador is right on the equator. And uh, there's all sorts of little touristy monuments where you can drive and they've done the surveys in the geology, yeah, you're standing with one foot in the northern hemisphere, one foot in the southern hemisphere, which means uh, the equator is zero degrees. <laughs> north or south, well, it doesn't make much, zero degrees. And then if you go north, really we're talking about here's a 90 degree angle. Don't write this down. I'm really going to mark this diagram up. So right there is about a 45 degree angle. That would be 45 degrees north. What are we at? How many degrees north? Right around 49, we're on the 49th parallel, very close to it, is the Canadian border. So we would be right around here-ish. That's a terrible drawing, Mr. Duick. My scale is way off. We would be right around e here-ish. I forgot to go 3D. And it also goes in the south. By the way, looking at the globe, where is most of the land mass located? In the northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere? Northern hemisphere, just the luck of Pangaea and how it settled. That may change in a few hundred million years. The equator receives exactly 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of darkness. And so Kyle Baylick, what that means, please? so what this means, because the sun's rays are hitting right overhead, very strong. So you, you, you were there, you may have noticed on a sunny day, you feel the sun almost like a weight hitting you in the top of the head. I've even been to Hawaii even. Even if you go to Hawaii, when you're laying out in the sun, you feel it way more than here up north. Okay, it's even more intensified in the equator. What are the two biggest things that affect biomes? Temperature and precipitation. The Tropic of what is located above the equator? You can get it from the map here. 
Tropic of Cancer, that's not named after the disease. The disease is named after the fact that cancer is a crab and early cancers look like the uh, tentacles or claws of a crab. Cancer is a crab. Is located above the equator. Tropic of Capricorn is located below the equator. The zone between these lines right in here, this is called the tropical zone? Yes, tropical zone. Yeah, I remember that word. Or the tropics for short. And it receives the sun's rays at a more direct angle overhead than in the northern or southern latitudes. This makes it much warmer year-round. I could have just said it makes it hot, but it's year-round. Sage, she needs your help. Give her an elbow. You know what? It's a... It was you. Okay. What else I have here? Latitude also affects... Hey, what did I say are the two dominant factors, the two dominant abiotic factors? So I've, re I've talked about how latitude affects temperature because of the whole sun's rays. Turns out lat latitude also affects precipitation. Did I spell that right? Let me double check. Precip I think so. Precipitation. Why? Well, moist air is heated at the equator. What happens when you heat air? Hot air what? It rises. But when it rises, it cools off in the upper atmosphere. And in the same way, when you go on a window and you see moisture gather because the hot air from your body has cooled off when it hit the window, the hot air at the equator rises, cools off, condenses, and falls back to the ground as rain. So the tropics receive by far the greatest amount of rainfall on the planet. And the polar regions receive the least. She needs your help, Sage. Um, this may seem counterintuitive to you because whenever you think about the polar regions, what are you imagining if I say Arctic or Antarctica everywhere? You're seeing snow and ice, I suspect. But, so you might be saying, doesn't that mean there's lots of precipitation? Actually, no, it just never gets above zero. So once the snow falls, it just stays there for years and years and builds up. <coughs> so, most rainfall at the equator, least rainfall in the Arctic. There's exceptions along the way. Put your pencils down. Five more minutes, pick your pencils up. What other abiotic, non-living factors affect biomes? Okay. Elevation. What do I mean by elevation? By the way, height is EI, not IE. So what can you tell me as you get higher, the temperature becomes what? Okay, colder. Why? Okay, atmosphere gets thinner, and because the atmosphere is getting thinner, it just can't hold as much heat. Oh, so that's one. I said the two big, big two are temperature, and what was the other one? Mountains also affect precipitation. I may start abbreviating that as precip from now on. What happens is as the wind hits the side of a mountain called the windward side, Tyra, it gets deflected up. It gets deflected up. And when it gets deflected up, it will cool off because it's gone to a higher altitude, less dense. It will cool off and fall as rain or snow. 
What that means is on the non-windward side, now there's a fancy word for that, it's called the leeward side. The air warms again, which allows it to absorb more moisture. Leeward, L-E-E-W-A-R, it's the opposite of windward. So if you have a mountain, whichever side the wind is hitting is called the windward. Whichever side the wind is not hitting is called the leeward. Or if you're a sailor, it's called the leeward. Because it just gets said faster. So what does that happen? Because the air is warming up, it can absorb and hold more water. So often on the leeward side of a mountain, you'll get a a dry land area. We have it right here. We are on the windward side of the golden ears. We get rain. When the rain makes it, when the wind, when the atmosphere makes it over, when the air makes it over, the golden ears on the other side, it's a little drier. So if you're wondering why they say rainy haney, there. Because the wind comes from the west and from the south hits the mountains this way. Oh, and because the wind from the west and the south is coming over the oceans, it's got plenty of moisture that it's evaporated from the oceans, so it's got plenty of water to do stuff with. If you've ever driven the Coquihalla, you can really see the effects of the altitude or elevation changes just in that drive, looking at how the undergrowth and how the trees and how the dryness changes. So there's a little summary here, and we'll pause here then. The wind is blowing, uh, da, 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 which way? What? Oh, this is not a wind diagram. We have an altitude. So grassland is usually down low. If you're part ways up a mountain, you'll have scrub brush. We call it chaparral. Then further up, you have mixed conifer forests. Then further up, you have what we call the taiga. That's where it's only evergreen trees, but you don't have any deciduous, any leaf bearing trees. Tundra an ice cap. Okay. So what's your job? That for sure. Then work on three sheets from last day, work on crossword puzzle, work on, I gave you a textbook assignment, test Friday on plate tectonics. Okay.